Today, I'm going to be saving this beautiful pink princess philodendron. Now, Pink Princess has been on my wish list for a really long time since I first started collecting. It's such, such a beautiful plant, and they were really expensive for a lot of years, but they've recently come down in price, so I, I got one this year. Um, Costa Farms actually sent me one, and it's so, so beautiful. I mean, just look at this plant. Isn't she a stunner? Um, Pink Princess obviously is known for the beautiful variegation that it has, but this plant has thrips. So I recently discovered a thrips outbreak in my plant room where I have like over my 200 different house plants. And in the past I would have been completely panicked, but to be honest, I'm not that panicked about it because over the years, uh, trial and error, I figured out a way that really just helps manage it, control it, and it's not that difficult to do. First of all, how did I discover that this plant has thrips? You can kind of tell by the new growth, just looking a little, wonky the new leaves that come out don't look great as one of the new leaves was recently unfurling i saw the thrips larvae but the ones that i've noticed to look out for are the yellow larvae which means they can't fly yet and then the black ones which can fly to your other plants and spread also if you have any suggestions on things that you've done to combat thrips or things that you know about pink princess philodendron that could be helpful to the rest of us just general care tips definitely leave them in the comments that is always always appreciated because pink princess is such a desirable plant yet i've heard it can be kind of tricky um you know as well so the first thing I'm going to do, I'm trying to decide if I want to just go ahead and chop off the tops of this plant because the new leaves just look really bad and I'm thinking about just trimming it back, giving it a fresh start. A lot of the thrip larvae will be in those new leaves that are still unfurling. But can we take a minute to appreciate like how much growth has happened on this plant? It's just pumping out new leaves, pumping out new leaves, even though it has had thrips probably for a while. So this is a great plant and I bet once I get the thrips under control, it's just gonna be pumping out new growth. And I'm not that disappointed that I have to cut down uh, the leaves because it'll just mean that the plant will push out even more growth and get even bushier, which looks really great on these types of philodendron. Now, if you're having a thrips outbreak, you do not need to trim off the leaves. I'm just going to go ahead and do it on this plant because I think it will increase the chances of it completely getting rid of the thrips. The other thing that I could do that I might do is treat the part that I'm gonna chop off um, for thrips later and then propagate it. Either stick it in some water or some sphagnum moss or some, um, you know, some soil and propagate it and have even more pink princess. But I don't know if I wanna do that with the thrips portion um, and, and encourage the cycle, so. I'll, I'm gonna think about that for a little bit. But first thing, I'm going to take some sterilized shears. I'm just using scissors today, but it's a good idea to sterilize them beforehand, of course. And I'm just gonna trim it down to where the damage on this plant, it looks like it started. I have here just a regular cup of water and you could use distilled water if you want to. You can see all of the terrible, <laughs> terrible new leaves that have come out and then the really nice leaves. So I'm just gonna trim down to the first node where I saw, where I see that like the trouble started. So you can even see some aerial roots coming out. Now if I decide to, I'm just gonna cut that. Ooh, so the thing, one of the things that's interesting about Pink Princess is that the um, sap that comes out, for lack of a better word, it's red. So don't uh, have it anywhere near anything that could get stained because it is like a bright red color. It's such a cool plant. I mean, it's obvious why it's so incredibly popular. Yeah. This one looks like where the trouble started. The two products I'm going to be using, and there's lots of different brands for each of these, um, is insecticidal soap for the leaves, and then also systemic granules for the soil. Now you can use, like I said, any brand of these. I'll be linking some in my description below uh, for everybody if you're interested. So my next step is that I want to use insecticidal soap on these leaves, but because I am going to be repotting it, I think I'm going to do the insecticidal soap treatment um, without the soil. So first things first. <laughs> Get 
get rid of this stuff. Typically just treating the soil itself is fine. You could just do the systemic granules, but I'm just trying to be extra, extra careful. The roots look really good, which is awesome. So you can see a little plug here and some people have mixed feelings about plugs. Some people really have a problem with them. Some people don't mind them. I mean, they are made so that the roots can pass through pass through the plug and you can see on this one that it definitely the roots have passed through they've come out completely through the bottom like there's roots all growing through it here and there's roots growing through the plug part of it here so I'm gonna remove it just because there's no point in having it and I am doing a full repotting um, the only problem with having the plug there really is if it's hindering the roots from growing now that the soil's been removed, the roots actually look exceptionally good, which is great news. It's not struggling from root rot or anything. Okay, I got most of the soil off. Now I'm going to spray this whole plant down and treat it with insecticidal soap. So washing the leaves of your plant and washing off the stems is a great way to get rid of any thrips that are on the plant. It's just kind of a first line of defense. Washing off the leaves from time to time in general is a good idea. Obviously this doesn't have to be done, you know, outside. You can do this in your kitchen sink, you could do it in your bathroom, shower, wherever. Most of my plants are still going to be in their planters. I'm not planning on repotting them. So normally I would just wash off the leaves and stem, but because I'm repotting this plant, I'm going to go ahead and wash off the roots as well. So now I'm going to spray down the leaves and stem of my plant with insecticidal soap. I like to use this in conjunction with the systemic granules, which treat the soil. Again, the insecticidal soap treats the leaves and the stems. It's not entirely necessary, but it's definitely a helpful step. So according to the Clemson Home and Garden Information Center, insecticidal soaps have many advantages when compared with other insecticides. They are inexpensive to use, among the safest pesticides, they leave no harsh residue and are natural products that are virtually non-toxic to animals and birds. They can also be used on vegetables up to harvest. In addition, most beneficial insects are not harmed by soap sprays. So small soft body insects such as aphids, mealybugs, thrips, scale, and spider mites are most susceptible to the soaps. I've heard mixed things about spider mites, but I have had success with insecticidal soaps and spider mites. Now insecticide soaps kill by suffocation. They appear to disrupt the cellular membranes of the insect and they remove protective waxes that cover the insect resulting in dehydration. So I again I'm going to spray down the leaves. I'm going to try to get in all the little crevices on the stems and insecticidal soap is not active when it's not on the plant and I am going to be washing it off. So the thing to do is spray it down, make sure it has a nice coating on there, and then let it sit somewhere that's not in direct sunlight for I'd say at least 15 minutes, do the magic, kill off all the thrips, and then give a, that plant a good washing. All right, that was great. It only took a few minutes. So now I'm going to repot this plant. Ideally, I would use a clear orchid pot, but I've run out of them in this size. So I'm gonna use a green one. No worries, I need to order some more of those. Um, now this is not a sponsored video, but as many of you know, I do partner with Repot Me um, on other episodes and I just genuinely like their products. I'm gonna use them today, but yeah, so that seems like the perfect size. Um, I'm going to be using their classic houseplant and tropical potting mix. I've run out of their philodendron mix. They have one specifically for philodendrons that I love, but like I said, I've used it all. Um, you could make your own potting mix. I just recommend not using just a standard potting mix from the store. Definitely mix it up with some perlite or pumice or orchid bark to get some chunky bits in there. I'm not the most patient. I just like dump the soil in and it always makes such a huge mess. I have these little nursery pots from the dollar store that I got, which are great for propagations, but they're so flimsy. Yeah, the dollar store's my jam. They have great stuff, especially in the spring. Whew, I always try to do a couple videos um, showing all the good stuff that I find. And they only carry it really in the spring, all their gardening supplies. So I stock up and use it, use all my little dollar store supplies throughout the year. Oh, look. Uh, fine for propagations, not great for um, my little soil shovel here, but it's doing the job. Almost there. I have to treat all my plants in my plant room still, 
But I'm just gonna do the systemic granules in the soil and then some insecticidal soap. Next up are systemic granules. So it has the instructions here. So if you have a four inch, it's 2.5 teaspoons, a five inch, 1.5 tablespoons, or a six inch, which is 2.5 tablespoons. So this is of a five, six inch or so, 2.5 tablespoons is about what we want to use. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I'm a Sagittarius, so I'm not the best with um, very specific instructions on things, admittedly. But I'm just gonna put a good amount in there. Um, I've never known it to harm my plants. Now these systemic granules work very differently than the insecticidal soap. Now as you water the plant, the granules will release pesticides which will be absorbed by the roots of the plant. Now when the thrips eat the plant tissue, they will eat the pesticides and those will kill them. It's also really highly recommended to quarantine your plant if it has thrips, keep it away from all of your other plants, and also clean the area where the plant was living. The other thing that I saw in here is that you can make a liquid with it. Maybe you could do a liquid version of this, which that would be, I feel, very, very effective and even better. So I'm going to do some research on that, and if I discover that it's like the secret sauce to turn this into a liquid and water your plants with this to get rid of thrips, I will definitely let you guys know. Or if you already know, let me know in the comments and everyone know in the comments. So here we have it. You can see I have a little pile of granules here. A nice little lump. I couldn't find my watering can. <laughs> so yeah, just kind of want to make sure we get those systemic granules really nice and saturated because we want the plant to drink up that liquid. And I'm gonna let this plant sit in this, um, in this water for a little while to soak it up. Just for a little bit to make sure that the roots get as much of that um, active ingredient as possible. So again, the two main things I would recommend doing, number one, systemic granules, and then the other one, if you wanna do insecticidal soap to get rid of the aphids, washing off the leaves, super important. If you wanna do that for the leaf treatment, you can. The other thing I will do for this plant, cause you can see it's kind of leaning a little bit. Once it gets healthy, I will give it some sort of either plank or moss pole to climb. You know, I think that they prefer moss poles, they meaning climbing philodendrons and climbing plants. I think they like the moss poles better because they can really like get a lot of moisture from it for their aerial roots and it helps a lot. But the planks are great because, you know, there's not a problem of getting pests on the plank like there is getting pests in the moss pole. So to me, it's already looking way better than it was. And I'm just gonna give it maybe, I don't know, five, 10 more minutes kind of in this solution and then I'll take it out because I don't want it to get too saturated and get root rot. But yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. I'll definitely keep you guys updated on maybe Instagram as to how this plant does. You know, it'll take a few weeks to know. I'll probably retreat it again in, in a few weeks. It says it can last up to eight weeks, but I think on the safe side, I'll retreat it again in a few weeks. And I'm not worried about it. Like I said, this plant is, is, uh, is gonna be fine. So if you have any suggestions on pink princess philodendron care or ways to get rid of thrips, definitely leave them in the comments. If you'd like to see future plant care videos and plant shopping videos showing up in your newsfeed, make sure to subscribe. And we also have an amazing plant community on Instagram that we would love for you to be part of. So I'm gonna clean up my mess. I hope you guys have a wonderful rest of the day. You'll definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.